Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. It's mid to late June and it's hot, it's summertime, and the end of my spring garden is nigh, but there's still some things going and growing. Let's go take a look. So like I said, it's kind of hot now, it's summer, and a lot of my summer uh, crops are gonna be placed in soon but they're not in yet, but I'm making room for them. I wanted to just show you around and look at what's going on in the garden as the spring garden uh, finally starts to come to a close, but also some of the things in the garden are producing quite nicely. Um, I also wanna give you an update about Black Gumbo Southern Gardening South. Many of you have been asking in the comment section, what's going on with my son's uh, poultry, his hens, his, his geese, his quail, uh, what's going on down there with the with the sugar cane? How is it growing? So we're going to go down there and take a look as well. Let's go see. Perhaps you can see here my eggplant are looking worse for wear. This is supposed to be a summertime crop, something that grows well in the heat. Unfortunately, these eggplant were infested by spider mites. I got to them um, in what I thought was time, but I, I think the damage was already done. And they're starting to suffer. I got neem oil on them several times. The spider mites have been arrested. I can't find any more on there. And I do have some fruit that needs to be harvested. But at the same time, look at them. They're kind of sad, aren't they? Hey, that's life. Uh, right next to them, my uh, tomato. That's a brandy wine tomato. Suffering a little bit from the heat, but it's given me some fruit. And it's still got some fruit on it that seems like it might be ripening up a little bit. So, uh, yeah, that's the status of those two right there. Right behind it, though, let's go look at my beans. I've shown you my lima beans before. There's not much to look at. Nothing, nothing's really changed. They're still producing tons of good Christmas lima beans. So... That's a real joy to me. There's also an eggplant there, a little bitty eggplant. And the spider mites didn't get that one as poorly uh, or as badly. So I think it's not growing as poorly as the others and it should recover and be a nice summer crop. I am having trouble with tomatillos though. Let's take a tomatillo look. The plant has apparently had it. I think it's done. It put on quite a bit of fruit. I got some off of it. Um, in fact, that one still might be good. That's a good one I'll come out and harvest. Phoebe, get out of there. Phoebe, get out of there. But uh, un un unusually, or uh, unfortunately, this was an unusual thing that this plant just dried up and died. All of a sudden, the leaves just shriveled up, drooped, and now it's crispy, and it's going to have to come out. It's been well watered. The one right next to it is perfectly healthy. What is this about? I have no clue. Maybe you know. This one, it can't possibly be at the end of its life, is it? That's not a full lifespan. I don't know. But uh, yeah, this one died, and that's the only one I have left. Actually, I've got another one over there, a small one. And they say you ought to have more than one tomatillo in order for it to fruit and produce. And these are producing quite well, but this big one here, well, there you go. It just died. I have taken out um, a lot of things right in here and planted corn, but as I uh, reported to you in the earlier video, Rodents or squirrels or birds ate my corn seeds all except for those little guys there. So this is really just waiting for cow peas. Likewise over here, this is waiting for cow peas as well. These were my dragon tongue beans. This is the area for them. And uh, yeah, there'll be uh, cow peas here. There'll be cow peas down there around those tomatoes when they come up. And as soon as all the tomatoes down here ripen up for me, then this will also be cow peas and maybe a couple of eggplants. Here is the frustrating thing I was talking about in my disappointment video. You wait on these tomatoes to get ripe and the birds get to them. Fortunately, there's plenty of tomatoes still on here. A lot of them ripening up. Uh, these two I'll pluck and they'll go in with me today. As well as this one down. Well, not that one anymore. Look at that. Into the burn pile. <laughs> ah, that's the thing that happens, right? Grow enough for me, grow enough for the birds. Sweet potatoes are doing well. They're climbing their trellis. I'm going to add another layer of this up here, but uh, haven't done it yet. Got some sweet potatoes in here doing just fine as well. And you know, the beans are still growing, still producing. Got lots of beans in here need to be picked. And so I'll come out probably in the morning, pick me a bunch of beans. Yeah, I love these beans. Got a lot of them that I left too long, like that and that. The problem here when you do that is that the beans, the bean plant kind of slows down in its production. And if you don't keep a bean plant picked, it will stop altogether. Here are my uh, other, my Japanese sweet potatoes. And these are looking like they need water, but that's weird. I watered that yesterday quite a bit. So I'll bring the hose over here and give them a drink. 
But uh, yeah, summertime. Some things look really good, like those muscadine grapes. Some things are struggling, like these uh, long beans here. Some things look good, like these green beans, and some things are bolting, like the mustard. That's the nature of it. Hey. Hey. You're not supposed to eat tomatoes. No. What are you doing eating that tomato? Hey. Don't eat the tomato. One of my squash plants, which was planted way over there, and has since died back over there from vine borers, had a vine that survived, and so I'm going to have a nice healthy plant over here in the pathway that uh, seems to be growing now without any trouble, without any uh, powdery mildew, and apparently the vine borers have done their damage and moved on, so maybe we might get a, a summer crop of some of that squash. That would be happy to me. That would make me feel good. Speaking of squash, look at this guy. This big stripy guy. I let this one lay on the ground and get totally mature way overripe, turn nice and yellow. It's enormous and this is one I'm going to save seeds from. And so that's why I let it get this way. Now I'm just going to let this uh, kind of sit and rot and ferment and I'll take the seeds out of there and store them for next year. I really enjoyed this squash. Well, my porch peppers are putting on lots of fruit and flowers and I've been harvesting those looking really good. Got one there that the bugs got into but that's okay there's plenty to go around. Figs are starting to put on lots of fruit. And uh, it's really hard to keep these figs hydrated during the summer. And you can see though that uh, they, they're kind of stressed looking here and there with a brown tipped leaf and some yellow leaves, some crispy leaves. This is just kind of normal for summertime for potted figs. Not so normal for the ones in the ground. But uh, for a potted fig, you're gonna get trouble like this from time to time. There are some figs ripening up and one that the birds have found. That one right there, that'll probably be ready tomorrow, maybe the next day, if the birds don't get it. I should put a little sock on it. I've got some, little sacks. Uh, these are Panache Tiger Stripes LSU variety. Lots of people always ask me about this. I haven't found one that I liked yet. I haven't eaten this uh, a fig off of here that was actually delicious. They just kind of look nice. So uh, yeah, I got some fruit on that one. But uh, yeah, the figs, they're putting on their fruit and starting to look like they want to ripen up. Some of them do. Like that one there. Lots of beautiful figs there. Lots of figs on these plants. Look at that. That's what I like to see. Lots of figs. I harvested potatoes from these two pots. And there weren't very many potatoes to speak of. This was my indeterminate variety. My uh, store-bought, uh, what were those called? Just the brown russet potatoes. And I got about two cups worth of tiny potatoes out of it, but not, not nearly enough to make it worth it. So I think I'm done with those kind of potatoes. I think I'm done with all potatoes this year or, uh, you know, in my garden until uh, I can find one that produces. So instead, I plugged in some pepper plants. These were some backups that were just waiting on an opportunity. So there we go. Hear that? We have life in our garden. Um, that's what's going on here. Let's go take a look at my son's property. Here's some of the livestock. Got a couple of tasty rabbits here. Bunch of tasty little babies. That's the mama right there. That's Big Daddy. Big Daddy. He had something wrong with his ears when he was acquired here, but my son's doctored him back to health. And here's some of the other ones over here. Hey there, you're going to be tasty, aren't you? Huh? <laughs> These are the quail. They've been put out to graze the grass. It looks like they need to be moved a bit. But uh, you can see they lay eggs just all around here. Nice little producers. There's Donald. He's my buddy. Sometimes. He's my son's guard goose. And over here is a very broody Bonka sitting in her little oil pan where her eggs are. She looks half sick, but she's fine. Here are the chickens. A couple of the roosters, including I think that one right there on the left is Floppy Joe. Floppy Joe Biden. Because you've got that floppy comb there. Hello, ladies. How y'all doing up in here? Y'all about ready to lay? 
Maybe that one's Floppy Joe. I can't tell. Here's some of the flock. Yeah, that one's got to be Floppy Joe right there. They love going out in the bananas here. Keeping the weeds and bugs down. Let me show you our uh, sugar cane over here. Here's the sugar cane. It's growing among the grass and weeds because, well, you can't you can't cut the grass back here with the sugar cane. So uh, here it is, it's coming up. This is the biggest patch of it right here. So, given some time, this whole area ought to fill out quite nicely with cane. So there it is. It's about a foot and a half tall, and it came up from where we planted it, way down there, by the chicken coop. And it's coming all the way down to about right here. This one actually is a different variety. This is a black Asian variety. Right through here. And down through the rest is just a standard kind of red southern sugar cane. Not much to look at now, but it should grow up and be impressive over here once it gets tall. So what we had was a batch of 30 originally, and my son bought these 30 hens. Um, and you can see that the rooster is very interested in them. <laughs> but um, these hens have grown up and are about to be laying size. But then there's another batch of hens that are younger, and you can see them. They kind of hang together back there, along with the turkeys. And uh, that's another group of a dozen or so. And, uh, yeah, they, they tend to stay together. You live in an oil pan, Ivanka. Don't you think that's a little beneath you? Don. Donald. Chill, buddy. Chill. Remember we're friends? Yeah, you remember. There we have it. It's the garden. Thank you for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. We really appreciate your subscriptions. We appreciate you following us on Facebook and Instagram. Happy gardening to you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.